in this lesson we will try to see the equilibrium of a set of forces all of which lie in a plane and all of them act on a body. We recall from previous class that we can find the resultant of a set of forces by first finding the x component of the resultant then y component of the resultant x component of the resultant is finding by is, is uh, calculated by finding the sum of x components of all forces as shown here that is x component of force 1 x component of force 2 and so on if there are n forces you will sum all the x component similarly y components they can be obtained by summing the y components of all forces that is y component of F1, y component of F2, all those we can sum algebraically to obtain Rx and Ry. Once we find Rx and Ry, we can find the magnitude of the resultant by summing the squares. Similarly, we can find the net moment as F1 L1 plus F2 L2 and so on for all the forces Fn Ln where this L1, L2, L3 so on these are perpendicular distances from moment center let the moment center be a point A so L1 is the perpendicular distance from point A to L1 uh, to force F1 L2 is the perpendicular distance from point A to force F2 and so on once we know what is the resultant uh, force and what is the net moment we can specify a condition for equilibrium because for equilibrium to exist the magnitude of the resultant force acting on the object should be zero because if the resultant magnitude is not zero that means a net force is acting on the body because a net force is acting on the body there is a net acceleration and thus the body is not in equilibrium so we can argue that if the body has to be in equilibrium the net force that is the resultant force acting on the body should be zero because the resultant is obtained as a sum of two squares we see that this Rx should be zero Ry should be zero so if R equal to zero is the condition for equilibrium sum of x components of the forces should be equal to zero sum of y component of the forces should be zero where this x and y are mutually perpendicular axes which we can suitably choose in addition to this the net moment of all these forces should also be equal to zero so what is shown in this box here is set of conditions for equilibrium of forces in a plane okay alternatively we can also specify that uh, a set of forces is in equilibrium if the sum of moments of all the forces about a point a equal to zero similarly sum of moments of all the forces about point b equal to zero point c equal to zero provided a b c are not collinear this condition is important okay we can choose any three arbitrary points as long as they are not collinear we can use either this as the set of conditions for equilibrium or this as the set of conditions for equilibrium depending on our convenience we'll try to see a couple of problems on equilibrium of forces in a plane and how to use the moments using a couple of examples one example is shown here where you have a horizontal beam AB which is hinged to the vertical wall at point A and you have a tie rod CD okay which is connected to the wall and also to the beam AB our task is to find what is the reaction at A that is you have a X component of the reaction Y component of the reaction you need to find both 
these reactions and also the tension in this tie rod S. So we have total three unknowns S and then the horizontal component of the reaction at A, vertical component of the reaction at A. Okay. Obviously to find this unknown forces in this system where you have three objects, a vertical wall, beam AB and the tie rod CD, you need to draw the free body diagram of some object and apply equilibrium conditions. We, we will find out what is that object by noticing the system carefully and see which object is touching the unknowns. We have the beam AB touching S which is one unknown. Beam AB is also touching the hinge here which is another unknown. So we will try to draw the free body diagram of beam AB. So we have the beam AB here. Let me quickly try to draw the free body diagram. You have the beam AB. Okay, that's almost parallel lines. This is an A and end B. You have end A and you have end B. Okay, and you have two forces acting down here, one here and one here, both of them equal and 500 newtons. And the distances are given. This distance is 2 meters and this distance is 1 meter. And at this point C, this is the point here, this point is what we call C and at this point C you have a force due to the, a force due to the presence of the tie rod. Okay? And so this force is what we call force S. and you have hinge reactions because we know that a hinge exerts two forces two reactions one here and then one here and the horizontal force is what we call XA to indicate that X component of reaction at A and this we call Y component of reaction at A Okay we can also choose an x-axis and y-axis we can also choose an x-axis and y-axis as shown here I'm trying to draw them in green color okay this is y-axis this is x-axis Now we can use the conditions for equilibrium. Okay, we have uh, shown here four forces: Y A, then X A, then this 500 force, 500 force four, and as total we have sorry five forces here, and we we can use three conditions. Okay, to find the three. Uh, to find the unknown forces okay let us see how we do that firstly we see the two of the forces x a and y a they meet at a point a okay so if we were to take moments about point a this x a does not contribute any moment y a does not contribute any moment because they are passing through this point a so the first thing we'll do is we'll say that sum of moments about point A 
is equal to 0 is one condition for equilibrium. To find the moments, we need perpendicular distance from here to here. This perpendicular distance we need. If this point is P here, we need this perpendicular distance AP, which we can very easily find out if this were to be the angle theta, which is uh, 30 degrees, we know that from triangle APC, okay, sine 30 degrees, 30 degrees is AP by AC, which means the unknown perpendicular distance AP is AC, which is 2 sine 30, which is 1 meter. So, if you take moments about point A and sum them and equate it to 0, the moment of the force XA is 0 plus the moment of the force YA is 0 and the moment of the force, uh, the moment due to the force S is S times the perpendicular distance is 1 perpendicular distance is 1 and this is a positive sign because the force S is trying to uh, turn uh, the object about point A in counterclockwise direction. Similarly, the 500 Newton force will have a moment 500 into 2 okay, and this force will have a negative moment 500 into 3 equal to 0 from which you can find the force S is equal to 2500 newtons which is one required answer okay and another thing we can do is to find the uh, reaction YA will take moments about point C and equate it to 0 okay if you take moments about point C and equate it to 0, you see that several several forces they get cancelled. 1, this S is passing through C. So, contribution of S as a moment is 0. Contribution of this 500 Newton force as a moment about point C is also 0. Contribution of this point XA as a, for, as a moment about point C is 0. So if you take sigma m C is equal to 0 you have one force uh, which is uh, which we can call y a y a multiplied by 2 y a multiplied by 2 this is a negative moment and this 500 Newton force multiplied by the moment arm 1, the distance between C and 500 Newton's perpendicular distance is equal to 0. And this 500 Newton force is also a clockwise moment. This equal to 0. So, your YA is obtained as minus 250 newtons okay the significance of this negative sign is that we started with the direction of y a to be going up because it is negative we will say that direction of y a should be downwards So you have two unknowns already found. One is the force in the tie rod. The other is the Y component of the reaction. And you have only one thing that is left to be found. That is the X component of the force XA, which you can easily find 
by equating sigma fx bar equal to 0. Okay. Uh, this would give x a is equal to s cos 30 degrees. Okay. There are only two forces. One is this x a going in the positive direction s cos 30 degrees going in the negative direction they should be equal to 0 which implies x a is equal to uh, 2 1 x a is 2165.06 newtons okay we need to be very careful here the three conditions of equilibrium we have used are sigma m a is equal to 0 sigma m c is equal to 0 and sigma f x is equal to 0 carefully note that x axis is along the line a to c so we are summing up all the forces along this line and equating it to 0 we will try to see a few more problems to uh, illustrate the equilibrium conditions uh, for a system of forces acting on a body, all of the forces lying in a single plane.